We started our trip at the Trutch Corrals, located a mile 200 on the Alaska Highway. The first four to five hours on the trail is through the Muskeg and over the high trail where we arrive at the Prophet River. The trail enters the mountains at this point and follows the Prophet to where the Bessa joins it. Finally made it. Whiskey. Whis whiskey pretty soon. <laughs> Oh, you made it. Yeah. What is Cookie eating? Cookie's eating his leech, I think. Look at that. <coughs> yep. Whiskey. Found it? Whiskey. There you go. Have <laughs> a shot. <laughs> He's looking at you. Cheers. Buddy. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> After a That's long good. day of cutting a new trail, we unpacked the horses before belling and hobbling them for the night. Campsites are selected primarily for the horse feed and water. <laughs> well, looks like we're going to have boiled potatoes, pork chops, cream corn. Very good. And whiskey. And whiskey. You forgot the whiskey. You want me to cut up the pork chops, Ernie? <laughs> yeah, I'll find the pork. <laughs> Here, we'll uh, get the pork. One of them big moose out there. Find me a tree. That's, that's what I'll call a fire. Good work. Mm. Hey, that's you! Good. That's not nice. <laughs> I hate to see him go cold. Mean! Good. <laughs> This is uh, Millican Creek, and we've got one more day to go to Bat Creek. Big boy the trail takes us up the South Fork of Bat Creek and over the high pass into the North Fork. As we crested the saddle, we spotted this herd of stone sheep. The ewes and lambs were not the least bit concerned by our pack string and continue with their grazings as Dagmar set up the camera and videoed them. On the return trip, it had snowed for three days and we had over one meter of snow on the pass. I had to go ahead on foot and mark the trail down the mountain as it was very difficult to make the trail out. If you ever got the pack string off the trail in these conditions, you might not get them back up onto it.
when we crested the saddle with the sheep on the slope beside us and looked down the North Fork Valley, we could also see a herd of elk, a herd of caribou, and a couple large bull moose. <laughs> this greatly impressed Chris as he'd never been on a pack trip into the mountains before. When we reached our campsite, there were so many bull moose in full rut that we only turned the horses out in the daytime for fear that the bulls would run them off. All night we were wakened by their snorting and the thrashing of their horns in the trees near our camp. On the back side of the uh, Sleepy Chief Mountains here, we have a lot of sheep and goat in this area. It's mainly due to the fact that there's good grazing on top and the cliffs offer adequate protection from predators. The first day as we rode through the Brockbrush Meadows of the Upper Valley, we had to halt and give right away to this 50 inch plus bull. He had love in his eyes as there were three cows on the opposite side of the valley. He paid no attention to us as we videoed him in the open meadow. Later that day we counted over 30 moose as we scoped the area for sheep. Later, Chris and I hiked up to a small saddle that looked down into the watershed of Kravik Creek. As we reached the saddle, a two-year-old bull moose crested from the other side and walked by us within 30 feet without so much as batting an eye. I turned around and told him if he came back that I would take a video of him. He stopped, turned around, walked back by us again, stopping on the mountainside. Unfortunately, the sun was right behind him and I couldn't get any video, but it sure did impress Chris. On the third day, we videoed this bull caribou with his harem as he runs off a small bull that gets too close to his girls. This is the first day of the snow and would result in us abandoning the valley and beating a retreat over the high pass. This year we had a early heavy snowfall in late August that gave the impression that the meadows had been mowed. It also brought down a lot of trees on the high trail.
to the profit that we had to clear before we could get the pack horses through. Grizzly tracks around here. In the mud here we got grizzly tracks. All heading towards camp. <laughs> mm. And of course we're out here just with water buckets. This pond was created when beavers dammed up an old backwater on the Minica River, creating habitat for a wide variety of animals, including the elusive swamp donkey. One morning when Ernie and I were packing our horses, these two grizzly bears emerged out of the underbrush and sat down to watch us. After they had disappeared back into the bush, I had Ernie fire a shot off into the trees as I didn't want them to be too comfortable with people as the next guys might shoot them with something else besides a video camera. This large bull has been rubbing the velvet from his horns in preparation for the rut, and as a result he has a willow bush lodged in his antlers. <laughs> 